Well, welcome to Palm Sunday. Thank you, Palm Ocho, for the challenge. Today, with the assistance, or actually the doing of my lovely wife, Ann, uh, we are going to make uh, the Lombardo version of sauce. As Paul mentioned, uh, macaroni and sauce on Sunday was an integral part of an Italian family. It's how I grew up, whether it was my maternal grandparents, the Lucci's, uh, whether my mom made it, or whether where most of the time we went to was my uh, paternal grandparents, the Lombardos. So my grandma Lombardo lived to 101 years old. This is her sauce. Uh, the boys in the Italian family weren't allowed in the kitchen in the day, and we just kind of sat on the couch and watched football while the women all prepared the meal. So uh, my wife Ann graciously learned uh, from my grandma the recipe, and she's going to explain, and I'm going to assist her on how we make uh, the Lombardo version of uh, sauce and meatballs uh, to try and match uh, Paul's. So here we go. Cheers. Of course, uh, uh, you need a little uh, little wine for Good Sunday morning. and have a glass of wine. We got a little Frank uh, in the background. Uh, Dean Barton will do it too for Roseanne, however you want to do it. And uh, off to hand. Well, what we do, uh, we start with our basic, it's a meatloaf mix. I use about two pounds, so I already put it in the bowl here. Put a little salt and pepper on already. We'll, of course, add salt and pepper, continue to do that as we make our mix. Um, I'm going to go over here and wash my hands to get started here. Every time I make the sauce, this is the original recipe I wrote down about over 20 years ago and Grandma showed me in the kitchen, getting very hard to read. I'm going to have to work on that, of uh, doing that, um, fixing that up a little bit. It's kind of uh, fading a little, but anyways, I memorize it, of course, but I like to keep it out, keep it out each time I do it for luck, um, from Grandma, of course. Uh, we start with, I already measured out the amount of garlic that we use. I use fresh garlic, I peel it and then put it in the chopper and chop it up as you can see, we've already done that. And we also start with fresh parsley. Uh, we cut that up and that's the amount that we need for this. So I'm going to start by just kind of getting the meat ready. I usually just use my hands. It's the meatloaf mix like I mentioned. I had put some salt and pepper on it before, but right now I'm going to start by adding more salt and pepper before I get started again. Kind of use a lot of that. Get that all mixed in there really well. Tom, you want to add the parsley? Absolutely. All of it? Yes. Go right ahead, get that all in there. Usually I just... And then the next we just add right on top of that, all the garlic that I have minced up here. The chopper works really great because it gets it nice and fine. And once again, just mix it all up using your hands. Want to add a little salt and pepper as I'm doing it? Since I have my assistant here today, just yeah, just go right at it there. Okay. Get it nice and mixed. Okay, that looks good. Got a nice meat mixture here with the parsley and the minced garlic, salt and pepper. And the next ingredients that we add, we like to use three eggs. So I just go ahead, we've got three right here. I'm just gonna add all three of those just right, right on top of that meat there. There goes one. I probably won't have time to do these. I don't know if he'd be able to do such a good job in cracking these eggs. <laughs> Not that I do the best, but whoops. There we go. Okay. Mix that up again with the three eggs, get it nice and moist. And we've got our breadcrumbs. You want to tell me to show my breadcrumbs? Uh, the breadcrumbs I use are, uh, I take old bread, stale bread that, you know, is left over, put it in usually like a dry it out place, let the bread dry out, and then once it's all dry, I grind it up. Just use a little, uh, so that we just use fresh breadcrumbs that we make our, ourselves. Put them in a the bag and just usually use a, a meat tenderizer and just ground those uh, pieces all up. You can go ahead and just pour that right in. Whole thing. Uh-huh. We already measured that out. 
Just the breadcrumbs, and then you're gonna add the Parmesan cheeses next. It's all measured out, yep. So now we've got our meat, salt and pepper, the parsley, the garlic, three eggs, about two cups of the breadcrumbs that I, the breadcrumbs we make ourselves, just from the old bread. And then we've got the Parmesan cheese, about three-fourths a cup. Grandma, of course, when she showed me, she had trouble kind of telling me measurements because she, of course, just did it all from her own little way. But uh, it seems she was able to let me know how to get started with that, with the measuring sizes. Good enough. So the last thing we like to add is, is a half a cup there? Could you put what, half a cup of water? Um, we have to add a little water here on top of all this. We're getting pretty close to the end here. Slowly I add that, just a little bit to see. I'm, sometimes I don't even use the whole, all the water, but I kind of just get a feel for how it feels the meat and see if we need more or not. Go ahead. So these turn out pretty soft inside once they're done cooking because of the water and the eggs and the breadcrumbs. It's amazing. Everybody's meatballs a little different and a little different tint to it. Of course, everyone thinks their own are the best. But uh, we've gotten good reviews on, on these. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. I think that's good. You want to add a little salt and pepper as I'm doing this? I like to continue to keep doing that as we go along here. That's good. Okay. And then you can see we've got our nice meatball mixture all ready to go here. Usually why I'm doing this, um, getting the meatballs ready, I'll start my pan. You want to take that lid off there? Um, this is the meat, the sauce pan that we use. I usually just add a little bit of the canola oil. You want to open it up and just pour some in there. Just like, we only use a little bit of the canola oil just to cover the bottom. So not a lot, just to kind of get the pan that looks good there. Just to, to cover the bottom, just, just barely cover the bottom. That's how we get started. I put a little salt and pepper in the pan on top of that. And let's get our oven on. Good. Yes, it's perfect. Oven. This one here to the, yeah, just to, yep, perfect. Right there's great. And this is how we like to start our uh, meatballs off. Just get like a handful. Grandma used to always say, you know, don't grab them, don't make them too firm, just kind of do it loosely. So I usually just pick it up about that size, about your palm. Just give it a little grab, not too heavy, like I said, just not a tight squeeze, just loosely kind of pack it in. And that's about the size we like to make our meatballs. Usually from this two pounds of meat that I use, we get about anywhere from 28 to like 32 meatballs, somewhere in there. And that's usually pretty nice for our Sunday dinners, and usually we have a little bit of leftovers the next day. Okay, we put all our meatballs on the bottom of the pan, added some water and then just some onion. So what I do then is just uh, add the lid right on here and I turn it down to a medium low and then I let that simmer for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, I do it right with the timer. I take off the lid, I flip over each meatball individually, then same temperature. Put the lid back on and then let the other side cook for 20 minutes. And that basically is how you cook the meatballs. Hi everybody, so the 20 minutes are up. So now I'm take my lid off, keep the temperature the same. And now I'm individually going to turn each meatball and then put the lid back on and cook for another 20 minutes at the same temperature. So our meatballs are done cooking. So what I'm going to do is there's a little bit of extra grease on the bottom of the pan. So what I like to do is just some of the excess pour it into a bowl. Take that lid, just probably about a cup of the grease, just let it kind of drain into there. And you want some of the grease still in there. Mary, come on over and show you the pan. Um, there's your meatballs, the onion in there, and the oil at the bottom still, uh, some of that juice from the meatballs. And then we're gonna make our sauce right on top of that. Okay, so our next two ingredients are gonna be uh, the crushed tomato, actually, both the same thing. We're just gonna pour that right on top of our meatballs here. There goes that can. Right on top, one at a time. Add a little water to the can. Actually, I fill it all the way up. And then back to the pan here. Pour that directly on top. 
kind of slowly. I turned the temperature up now, so from when it was on low for the meatballs, a little higher to cook all the sauce in with this. What I'm going to do is just add the other can, the crushed tomato as well, and then uh, we're going to add our spices on top of that. Okay, so we add our two jars of crushed tomato with the water and our spices. Our last ingredient here today is the uh, big jar of tomato paste. So we're going to add the jar of tomato paste right into there as the sauce is boiling it's on a high temperature there. Add the whole jar of paste and then we're going to fill this jar of paste with a full water and then pour that right into the sauce as well. And that's really it. And uh, once you have added the paste and the full jar of a uh, can of water, a little more salt and pepper to taste, and then uh, we just add our lid onto that, turn the temperature down and let it simmer for about an hour. And uh, pretty much after the full hour, that's pretty much the end of the sauce and meatballs. And the final product, Cavadil's meatballs, a delicious meal, family, everyone be safe, and I challenge Moira Reardon and Nicole Pfeiffer next. Enjoy.